Good morning, Interweb, World Builders Log 22. We are continuing to build out our fictional universe. In this video, we're going to look at adding detail to some island arcs and hotspots in our modern world. But first, quick PSA, the reference doc, it is no longer. What I've done is I've transferred all of that info and put it onto a dedicated website. It's a lot neater this way, I think. Artifactscene.com, links in the description, go check it out. There's some new updated artwork, plus like a whole bunch of little Easter eggs in there. Go check it out. I think it's worth it. Artifactscene.com. So, Island Arcs, hotspots. In order to save a bit of time and to reduce the amount of on-screen G-plates, I did a fair bit of work off camera. So this is the state of the world as we'd left it last time. And here are the updates. I'll just bounce back and forth so you can get a feel. Very subtle, but I think important stuff. Some notable additions here are Iceland up at this little hotspot region that intersects with the Mid-Ocean Ridge, like that. Then there is this polar Hawaii chain, which I think is pretty neat. And then we have this central large island arc here, which I, I don't know if I like this. The more I look at it, the more I think that this island arc should probably be smushed onto this continent here. So it forms like a little horn, completely closes off uh, this bay area here. I think I might do that off camera, maybe. Let me know what you think. Do you like this island arc in the middle here? Or do you think it should be glued onto this continent? Now, I didn't fill in all of the island arcs. This chap here is still in its abstracted form. We'll fill this in on video today. And also this hotspot here has not been filled in and we'll do that as well today. Just so you can see the methodology should you wish to emulate it. Okay, so let's start working on this hotspot. Recall that along a hotspot trail, G plates places arrowheads every 10 million years. Therefore, the closer these arrowheads are together, the slower the plate is moving, the further apart they are, the faster the plate is moving. Knowing the plate speed is kind of important because it could help inform the morphology of the islands we create at hotspots. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit S on the keyboard and I'm just gonna measure the distance between two of the arrowheads here, or specifically the final two arrowheads. And I can see here that this is 246 kilometers. So I'm gonna pop over to this spreadsheet I made and I'm gonna write here, just in my notes column, pace 246. Now it might be like hotspot D3, what the hell is that? I exported a map off air and gave it a chessboard treatment. This is the hotspot we're working on and it is located at D3. So I basically just set up a coordinate system to help me locate these features. So with this figure down, we can pop over here to this hotspot speed chart I set up, where I define what on this world is a slow moving plate, a medium speed plate, or a fast moving plate. The range here goes from 70 to 700 because the slowest moving of my plates that has hotspots on them had our heads spaced about 70 kilometers apart. And the fastest moving plates here, this chap, had our heads are about 700 kilometers apart. So based on absolutely nothing but gut feeling, I took that range, split into three, and used that to define slow, mid, fast. With the thought here being that for slow moving plates, a given bit of plate material will be over a hotspot for a long time because the plate is moving slowly. Therefore, a very large island will build up and those large islands, when they move off the hotspot, will take a long time to roll down, i.e. they'll form a long chain. Basically, think kind of Hawaii. Conversely, on fast moving plates, a given bit of the plate will only very briefly remain over the hotspot, thus only a small island is formed. And when that small island moves off the hotspot, Erosion will grind it down really quickly because there's just not that much material built up. So we'd expect small islands and no long chain. So kind of like an anti-Hawaii. And then for medium speed plates, it's just an intermediate between these two extremes. And from there, based on no kind of maths, just a survey of what the hotspots on Earth are doing, I set myself these boundaries with a sort of theoretical maximum here of about 15,000 square kilometers for the entire island chain, because that's about what Hawaii is. I think Hawaii is like 16,000 square kilometers, all the islands factored in. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, again, our pace here, the distance between the arrows was 246. That puts us firmly in the slow camp. So we're looking at a big island over the hotspot plus a long chain, 5,000 square kilometers plus four to six islands. Wonderful. So I'm gonna pop back into G plates and I'm gonna get drawing.
Okay, so there are some tentative shapes. What I'm gonna do now is F on the keyboard, select the feature, S on the keyboard for the measure tool. And I am going to copy these areas here and paste them into this calculator, which basically just totals up the area so we can see if we're in the range we want to be. Ignore cross to add, we'll talk about that later. That does a different thing. Okay, so we're two and a half thousand square kilometers in total. We need to double that. Okay, one hotspot, island chain, done. Big island, four to six islands in the chain, cool. And our final tally here was 5,200 square kilometers. So I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna come up here to area actual here, and I'm gonna paste this in, which then grays out this to tell me that it's done. I've inputted that into the G plates. Okay, hotspot done, let's do an island arc. So we're gonna work on this chap here, that is island arc 5D. I'm going to put on my Island Arcs layer, hit F on the keyboard, I'm going to select that and make a note of the fact that it began at 1,600. Next thing I'm going to do is hit L on the keyboard and I'm just going to draw a line paralleling this subduction zone, something kind of like that. S on the keyboard and find that the length of that line is 4,345 kilometers. Back over to the spreadsheet, the length of that Island Arc was 4345 Point zero seven nine zero, and it formed at 1600. So that means we need to add this amount of crust, about a million square kilometers. So I am going to copy that, and I'm gonna paste that here into area theory. And I got some conditional formatting here to um, highlight where most of the crust is being added. And this is significant because all the crust added thus far, excluding the four major continents, have come to about 1.7 million square kilometers. And this is about 1 million kilometers on its own. So what is that? That's about somewhere between 30 and 40% of all the crust added at subduction zones and island arcs will be contained within this island arc. Okay, and then I'm just gonna, while we're here, clear this, cause we'll need this to be free again. Oh, and for crust to add, I am going to tie this to that figure. So we need to reference this figure. So that is how much crust we have left to add. It basically, it's a checksum. Okay, so how are we going to do this? I think I would like, just purely from aesthetics, to have something up here hit the mainland. So I can take this mountain range and just continue it on down through the island arcs, which I think it would be fun. And in general, I think, yeah, big island here, just getting smaller as we approach here. But obviously that's going to be informed by like, what the tectonic history is doing. So I'm just going to scroll back a little bit. Okay, cool. So here we can see that this mid ocean ridge here is being subducted kind of head on in this area. So I think, and we have subduction of mid ocean ridge the whole way up as well. Yeah. So I think that would imply there needs to be a substantial island here and we want a substantial island up there. And in the middle, I think I'm gonna let myself do whatever I want. I think that's justifiable. All right, time-lapse mode, engaged.
Okay, tentatively something like that. In case you're wondering why I made some of the decisions I made here, uh, I'm drawing inspiration from Sumatra in Indonesia, where we have large islands. You have kind of these foreground islands between the subduction zone and the kind of main big islands. And then you also have these kind of like behind the main island islands going on here as well. So I was kind of trying to mimic stuff like that here. Background islands, some anomalous things going on, the sort of the main arc happening here and then this foreground arc happening there. Now we got to go put in those areas and tweak until we get to where we need to be. So we are about 150,000 kilometers off, which isn't too bad. So time-lapse mode re-engaged, detailing time. Okay, I think that is the island arc done. We are about 5,000 uh, square kilometers over, but that's grand because this is only approximation. So I'm going to take that total copy and I'm going to paste this into arc 5D actual. And now we have a tally for the totality of crust added at hotspots and island arc. So just under 3 million uh, square kilometers. And if we assume the area of each of the continents, oh, FYI, uh, I did that by creating an area layer, which is basically just tracing the continents, hitting F, selecting that layer, hitting S and using that to gauge the area of the whole shebang. If we assume that these areas remain the same, just for a second, we will get a total area of about 225 million square kilometers, which gives us a land percentage of 31%. And if we take Earth's land coverage uh, as being 29%, that means we're 2.5% over. So we have, again, assuming one of the goals is to have an Earth-like land coverage, we have 2.5% to play with when it comes to eating into the continents to create the modern coastlines, which will be the topic of the next video. Okay, that was that. Island Arcs, hotspots, done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you're looking forward to the next video as much as I am. So, until next time, Edgar out.